Dr. Whittemore, thanks so much for joining me today. You're welcome. I was really interested in your work with site-specific cancers. Can you explain what that is and tell me a little bit about what projects you're tackling? Okay, well cancer, although we talk about it in the singular, is really many different diseases. And for example, the problems that cause prostate cancer can be quite, quite different from those that cause skin cancer or breast cancer or other cancers. Each cancer has its own special pathway and etiology. And some more than one, probably. That's right, that's right that, exactly. And so site-specific means you study a particular cancer, and I focus, my research is mostly on cancers of the prostate, breast, ovary, and skin. And how do you use big data to inform your work? Oh, we do, we use it constantly. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful tool, and it also presents enormous challenges. We use it because we look at families with many cases of either breast cancer or prostate cancer, or huge numbers of subjects, like perhaps 10,000 pa patients with skin cancers, and maybe 60,000, 70,000 patients without skin cancers. And we look to see how their genomes differ. And so the, examining their genomes in today's world can require looking at something like nine million different markers wow. on the chromosomes. And how we, long does that take to look at that many yeah, markers? That's right, it takes quite a while, but imagine. we have high-speed computing that allows us to do that. But the real challenge comes in, in how to interpret these variants that we find. So, for example, if we find two men who are first cousins and they share the same rare marker on one of their chromosomes, we need to know whether that's by chance or whether, in fact, this is really a damaging pathogenic uh, change that they, and, and we have nine million of those to deal with, and so we need to figure out ways to prioritize these variants that we're finding. And one way that we can do that is to use big data, to use online programs that combine biophysical considerations, evolutionary considerations, all different considerations about these variants to say, these guys look like they're, they're potentially quite bad. They could be pathogenic. And these look like, no, they're nothing much to worry about. We have to prioritize them in order to do our work and find what it is that causes prostate cancer or breast cancer. Do the computers, for example, look at if you found a gene in people who had cancer and see could it actually theoretically cause it? Like if you found a gene that caused brown hair, probably yeah. doesn't cause cancer. Is that what the, the work that no, the computers No, that's doing? in fact not even true. <laughs> We've, we find genes that cause brown hair and they're related to being fair skinned and getting sure. skin cancer. That's a good point, so, yeah. So yeah, so then our challenge is teasing out what's causing just the skin cancer, the, the fair skin, or right. the fair uh, complexion and blonde hair, uh, and that's, therefore, they're at risk of skin cancer, and what genes are directly causing skin cancer. So that's a challenge. I yeah. think one problem that the lay public sometimes has is the confusion between correlation and causation. Yes. Causation is really, really tough. It's really, it's almost a, a problem for philosophers mm. because you can, when you start looking at it closely, you can get into so many nuances. You can have many different causes, many different factors have to happen together to make a disease occur. And if you remove any one of them, then the disease won't occur. And so how do you allocate causality? How do you even figure out causality? So the best we can do is find things that look to be very, very strongly associated. And that can be very useful because what we want to do is put people into different strata saying, you, you're at very low risk. You don't need mammograms. But you, your family history and your genetics suggest you're at very high risk. So you need mammograms and you need maybe even more intensive screening to, pr to get your breast cancer early or prevent it entirely. So under the surface, not everyone is the same when it comes to cancer. Not at all, not at all, not at all. And we're going to be rapidly reaching the era when we're going to be sequencing the entire genomes of every newborn baby. Wow. We have to learn how to cope with that information and use it for the betterhood of people's health and longevity. That would be so wonderful. Yeah. Dr. Whittemore, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs>